here's the back of a jet, an FA-18. I'm going to mould that whole back section. So what I've done is, I've made a buck, which is made out of a piece of wood. And that's that, that's that section up here. See how the blocks have been stuck together and carved. Now what I'll do is I'll get acetate, which is great because it's Easter now. And I've got lots of acetate from Easter eggs. Let me show you. I've got lots of these. Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm using the heat gun. This is one of those hot guns. So I heat up the acetate and then stretch it over the buck. I won't do it now. I'm worried the heat's going to affect the camera. So I heat up the sheet and then stretch it over the buck. And it ends up like this. <clears throat> Look. This thing, you can see the edge of the Easter egg wrapper there. What's happened is I've heated that up with the heat gun and then stretched it over my arm, um, stretched it over the uh, buck. Now what I've done is I've got a ruler and then I've ruled out the pieces that I'm going to cut carefully. Now what I need now is scissors. I'm going to trim it out, which is difficult because it's going to make it a bit floppier. It's a lot more solid with the hard edges on it, but the ugly bits on it, so not nice and straight. Scissors, just basic tools. A lot of the things I use are so basic, except these are surgical scissors. I was lucky to get these, $6. They're at an op shop, a second-hand shop. Or charity shop, I guess you'd call it, is the collective term. But even though, look, see, even though these edges are ugly, see how there's some ugly pieces here and this bit? I'm going to cut all that off. You won't even know that it was rough at it all. You watch. This is such a fine way to make models because what you're using is you're using the most basic things. And that's what I'm looking to do. I don't want to make a complicated thing. Basically like things that would otherwise be, oh, I don't know, take, taken away or thrown away. And this plastic doesn't break down very well. So it's no good in landfill. But it converts. It's a wonderful material in its own context. see that but it's a bit hard to get the scissors in there I probably got the wrong scissors no there you go doesn't that look sharp that's so sharp now the difficult thing is to get the outlet of the jet pipe here see how that's bunched that's all going a bit hard so I'll cut up here it gets much stronger, that's why they make corrugated iron has ripples like, you know, it goes up, goes up and down like that. It makes it much stronger. Same here, when this creases up like this, it makes the surface much stronger. So as soon as I cut it away, it's not going to be as um, solid. Be careful, it's difficult. Sometimes when you cut, the scissors tend to, um, because they're all curved surfaces, the scissors tend to walk off the line and you get those hairy cut edges. So you just got to take it in very short sections. I can tell it's, I don't, be better off having curved bladed scissors here. Or moving them around to the right spot. Oh, it's going to look great. I can't wait to paint this one. This one's going to look so good. See that? So the bottom of the um, fuselage. I might put a flange on that so that this comes in a bit. I want that to sort of pinch a bit. See how it sort of flares out? Look at this. See how that sort of spreads out? What I need this to do is I need that to become round. So I may bend a bit of wire and put a bit of wire in there to stiffen it up. That's lovely with those sharp edges. 
Okay, I'm not sure whether I'll do the box in there. This could be a box in there. I'm not going to do it. Down on the fuselage here, we've got a return curve. We'll have a look anyway. Good start. So I'm going to keep cutting down this shell for the FA-18. I've put a strengthening rib in here. If I turn it over, you can see it's a wire one. I've put a, um, a wooden thing because it was starting to flex. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep cutting off the um, excess material until I've got the shape moulding that I need. Because I'm going to start putting strengthening ribs in. So get all that stuff off. You see how it's starting to come, come into shape? There's some deep slumps here so um, it's looking terrific already. So you can imagine if I take that off. I've already got a very very good um, shape. Very exciting. It's interesting construction here. What I'm going to do is make the back of an FA-18 that's being serviced. So you can see here the structure is up on blocks has that distinctive V-shaped tail fins. But what's interesting about it is this is being um, worked on so the whole mechanical area is empty. The engines have been taken out. And it's like a giant empty lobster shell. I love this because... Um, so what I've done is I've um, moulded each section around bucks. So I've carved pieces that represent the components like this. Let's have a look. See that? And then moulded the pieces over the top and cut away the ugly bits because as you mould things you get flash around the edges. Oh, not flash. It's um, As I pull things around one shape you get creases and stuff. Just like when you're trying to wrap a present except it doesn't stay soft for that long. So I cut those things off and I use um, sharp edges, I use a, a steel ruler and a blade to sharpen up those edges. I've put the wing spar in here, the rear wing spar. But what I like about this one is the whole thing is empty, the whole thing is hollow. It's similar to an aircraft in essence in that it's got a shell and an attached frame just like a lobster I guess. So it's got these rib structures and supports and bulkheads it's similar it's similar in essence not really but and over the top here I'm filling this up I've got the two tail fins so it's the first time I'm using grey auto primer because it's just it goes over plastic it goes over wood it goes over everything which is fantastic got the tail fins up so it's starting to shape up. Cut an access hole before. I'm not very happy with it, but I'll work it out in a second. You can see there there's an access hole there. I'm going to start painting the tail fins in a minute, but what I wanted to show you was this process of getting those uneven sections filled in. So let's see if I can give you the correct angle. So what I've got is I've got a view down the... Um, so this shell section has been made out of another piece of wood, moulded wood, similar to this. Doesn't matter. It's around here somewhere, I know it is. So I've just been using it. So what I try and do now is just fill it up as much as possible so it's smooth again. The trouble is, it's very flexible, that's why I put a frame in there. Oh, it's weird this this is so weird because you never know and actually annoying thing is it's never enough really you just keep going because as you fill one set of holes the next lot is almost like putting its hand up to say me 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 it's a bit annoying to some people this would be the culmination and great and spend ages over it I just like this to be over now because it's pretty well. I've pretty well got it. All I have to do is do the wheel, some stuff under the base. That might do. I won't even do the other side now. 
because I really need to get a move on again. That's good. I keep saying this, I'm very proud of this one. This has been um, a big effort, something I'd never done before. It's all done in moulded sections. I love it, I do like it a lot. Ugly, isn't it? But that's how you create shape. You're rough. That's how sculptors work. Um, you start rough and then you smooth it off, either by chipping away or building up. One of the two things. And both techniques are used at one time or another. Chipping away at the shape or building it up. seems to me it's what I've always wanted to do now that I'm doing it because remember primarily I'm an illustrator so I draw you can see that in the drawing behind that's good nice oh, I want to see that there's some ribs that I've used to strengthen this because it's a very thin shell so the shell is see how thin it is a couple of ribs pieces of bent wire sectioned wire um, struts that are bent over and pieces of wood shaped into the hull and they all add their strength and of course some reinforcing for where I've got the tail fins because the supports to the tail fins go straight through the body there but they go into that wood so because I couldn't put it straight into the shell two things I wouldn't have enough for the support to um, stick into but also it would wobble because there'd be no support and it would make this not very strong. So um, that strengthens up that section amazingly. And it's actually quite rigid now, it doesn't twist. There's not a lot to see, like if I try and twist it, it's actually very rigid, even though it's not heavy. So it's, um, hmm, it's starting to teach me some things about aircraft construction, I like that. Okay, there we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just build up a small part of the hull we can see here is the area that the wheel retracts into it's a fairing that goes over the side of the hull now if I go back to the hull I've started by shaping a piece of balsa wood and adding it on but it's not the correct shape so let's get that on first this will allow the other bits to dry while I'm doing this so um, let's just tag some um, bits on there not too much glue um, I find it doesn't stick and it creates mess. Your standard model building practice is um, you never ever use too much glue. If there's nothing else you do, don't use too much glue because um, it destroys the surface of what you're working on. So what I've done is I've put that plug in there, that's a good start, and we'll start shaping that. Now I've got a surface panel to go over the top because its shape actually goes over the top rises and then falls it's hard to see there but you can see the shape here so what I'm going to do is first of all cut the shape the basic shape oh you don't need paint the paint simply to hold my pamphlet from sliding away So all I do now is simply cut the shape and I'm going to make it bigger on all parts so that I can smooth it down later.
Now this is going to take quite some shaping. Two things I need to do, I need to cut away this front edge. So what I do is I start shaving it away so it'll fit close up to the skin of the aircraft. This can be hard because basically this wood is very um, beautiful to work and smooth but it's very porous. So it's going to take some filler but I can work quickly if I try. If I try hard I can do this. Got to bevel it on both sides because this has got to go down into the old sh into the um to the shape of wood that I'll show you in a minute. By bevel, it's an angle. See here, you'll see what I'll do with it in a second. I've got to take it off because it's got to meet. That's pretty good. What an odd shape you get. It's like such a strange thing. Look, still got to take some off the back here. I don't know. I should put wood in there because it's going to save me time if I use wood. But um, I think filler might be the way to go because I get a smoother shape. So what I'll do now is I'll just grind it down a bit. So um. made some tools by sticking sandpaper on balsa wood. Because this has to be slightly curved here. Such a strange shape this object. It must be curved anyway. It's getting there. What I've done is I've sprayed some aluminium over the hull some aluminium spray paint but I've masked things off to give some different panel sort of gaps so if I take those off what I'll get is I'll start to get an impression of the different colours on a raw aircraft fuselage which is pretty good pretty interesting now I need one over the middle it's starting to look the part and some matte black goes over here so it must be carbon I guess What you do is, you do that. It's hard to mask because with those contours, the different curves. This is wonderful. I'm about to get the black paint in there at the moment. It's going to look terrific. I know you need some really quick to use universal tape. I'll show you what I mean. Now, what I need to do is I need to mask off the back of it. Um, let's have a look. So, what you'd use is you use anything. Anything you've got. So what I mean.
open our recycled tape. Look at this. I've got all the tape I've used here. You can see the silver on the tape. You recycle it. Funny thing is I've just spent a couple of hours trying to make sure that everything merges and now I'm trying to separate the panel joins. All part of the fun. Okay, now. So I've put a flush of white spray paint over it just to lighten the panels off. Because um, they're all sorts of different colours. I'm using reference, mind you. So um, I should be able to peel that off. Where I've masked some of the aluminium sections off. So it should be a bit lighter. It doesn't have to be much. I'm not looking for a great deal of difference. It's pretty good. There's the downside. Did you, just, did you see the downside? Pulled a big chunk of filler out there. I didn't use the low adhesive tape. I've been in a hurry and I've just gone for the big tape. So I've painted the rudders, which are carbon fibre. Give those a sand back too to just make them look a little bit more sort of warm. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask off this section here, which is a carbon fibre. This box is also carbon fibre, according to the um, according to the um, reference photo. So I'll make that look proper. Oh, it's good fun. It's the best bit. I love this bit. Funny thing is, what I've got is a really lightweight hollow shell. It's just, it just weighs nothing. It's so tiny. In terms of weight. watery um, the watery is good for the coverage I want but it's going to go under the tape for sure so I better just thicken it up
we'll see if that transfers. But um, patchwork effect's getting really good. <clears throat> Have a look at it. Oh, normally what I'd do is I'd leave it on. But I get the feeling that this stuff's going to leach underneath, so I want to be, be there. But it's coming off. See, that it has, it's leaked. So mark it everywhere where you need your panel lines, panel joins, right, and we mask, masking is fun, it's my favourite bit. So what you do is you just put the tape along the pencil lines, wherever there's a pencil line you tape off, and you tape, is that the side you want to keep? Two minutes in closing, okay, let's do it. Oh no. Let's have a look at it. I love pulling masks off. Even if I have to mask it all off again, I want to have a look at it. I don't care, I've got to see it. Just got to be careful here because you just really want to tear it off. It can pull up paint. Black's fine to repaint, I can do that. No leakage. Woo hoo. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty weird. Anyway, it wasn't great because the colour, I think the colour's too different. I don't know, I might have to wear it back a bit. Sand it back a bit. Not bad. Okay, we're just going to put these tail fins on, so I'll just put some glue down on the pins. <coughs> these pins <coughs> correspond Loosely with the pins I saw on the drawing. They're not exact, they're not precise. I'm just trying to give an impression. I think um, it sums up this work. It's an impression, something that was meant to resemble or suggest. Evoke. I love that feeling, something that looks real. I've been dying to put that tail fin in. I can't, I can't begin to tell you that that's one of the most exciting things. Because I knew it was there. I had the tail fin cut before I did so much of the thing, just so I could get a sense of scale, and there you go. That's so cool. So here's been one of the more difficult ones. It's the back of the FA-18. You can see it on the, um, on the example there. And, um, We've put on the tail fins and we've painted the uh, fuselage. Most of it is not sculpted, it's all painted, so all these bits, even where the wing spar is there, I'm 
in there. You can kind of see that's all painted. So I've used different paint finishes by masking off like I showed you. Use some weathering techniques underneath the um, tail planes. I'm putting some pins down. Little locating pins, you can see those. Locating pin for the tail plane. So it's looking really, I'm really proud of it. I've put some ribs inside there, structural ribs. And the hydraulic ram to hold it up. But have a look, I haven't even finished the ends of the ribs. They're just going to go up into there now. That's mounted on the stand. What I've got is if I just put this down for a second, this has to be mounted on this stand, which doesn't look right, does it? Looks like a. So I've put the end mounting panel, built up the end box. Crooked. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do now. We'll just mount it up. There's the cradle that the whole thing goes on. And now what I'm going to do is oh, I'm going to mount the aircraft up onto it. So the aircraft will come down onto the cradle. I've just got to straighten out a bit of wire here. I've done something wrong. Now I've masked off the aircraft so that I can spray some pieces here underneath because I need to do the um, brackets. Um, the jacks. So once I've sprayed, once I've masked it, whoop, you spray the bits that need doing. Whoop. Silly thing to do anyway. And I've sprayed everything now. It's just I can't spray here. Probably not good for the camera. Then what we do is remove the remove the masking. I love this bit. Have to be careful. So what I'll do is, instead of putting strain on everything, I've used a, um, a type of, like it's like tracing paper because it's thin and it bends easily around the different profiles. I have to be careful here because these are the same scissors I used to cut the, um, the plastic that I built this thing out of. Obviously the masking stops I don't like this at all. Obviously the masking covers the areas that you don't want to receive paint. You use very sticky sticky tape. And I guess that's the idea. Oh dear. Geez, the stuff really sticks though. There's another danger of course that you'll take off paint. Anything that you stick tape to. Tape's a really great way to remove paint. So if I've done my job properly, if I've done this job properly, what should happen is there should be no paint on anything I didn't want painted. Oh dear. And I shouldn't have damaged anything either. Because the masking, the paper's quite heavy for such delicate pieces. So that's the look. Yeah, it's good all right. Oops, wet. It's still a bit wet. So I'm so impressed. I just love it. It's so good. Check it out. It's just so neat. 
Now what I've just spray painted is the extra bits I've added under here. Because when I photograph it from that angle, that'll show up. I've used some of these paints here. And I'm mixing the colours of the girders or the support structure for the aircraft before I start building up the background. I've mixed it up in a film canister because I'm going to have to need it. I'll need it a couple of times. So that's all um, mixed up in there so I can seal it off again. It's hard to paint with acrylic because it's kind of like... Oh, this one's good though. It's usually horrible. Like it... Oh, that's really good. It's gorgeous. So what you do is, I try and paint the inside surfaces first. A couple of coats we're going to do. You can see the grey undercoat, it's formed a really good base coat, it's just with this acrylic it does shine through a bit, so it's a couple of, couple of coats of paint. But it forms a really good base, it really takes paint well. Oddly, you have to be careful, you have to go briskly, but don't paint too quickly because um, you get too many brush strokes. Typical painter's rule, um, get the most expensive brush you can afford because basically it's about bristle. The more expensive a brush, the better the bristles, the easier, the more paint it holds and the easier it smooths the paint out. Paint brushes used to be made by hand. They're an extraordinary, um, well it's everything isn't it really because Apart from the quality of the paint, it's the paintbrush that puts it down on the um, surface. And you'd be surprised, it's the one thing where I say that um, the difference in quality is immediately noticeable. Like I'm using very fine bristle brushes here, sable, red sable. And it's wonderful. paint around the detail and then lay it off. Grey would have been just as serviceable as that red I guess. I'll be mounting up the F FA18 now so here's my sketch and um, here's the aircraft. It's a bit smaller than the actual one so I guess I'll have to enlarge the final result. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to recycle the baseboard here. This, the thing that I've done all my work on up till now, I've just renewed that. But as you, as you can see, what I'm doing is, you can see all my marks in the tape. Probably a whole lot of, there'll, there'll be drawings and notes too. It's typical of a baseboard I use. A piece of aircraft fin. It's the fin of the FA-18, I think, looking at the shape of it. But what I'm going to do now, because it's got a certain texture on it, um, it's got some spots of paint and stuff. I'm going to use that as the baseboard because it's um, an acid-free mount. So it's a really good piece of board. It's just got a bit of scum on it. But that's fine. What I'll do is I'll cut that out. Get a larger ruler. Because I'd probably end up just making the texture anyway, getting a clean piece of board and texturing it. So, um, yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Crazy. And the scores and marks should um, give some indication of a cement floor, I'm hoping. I think the crosses and marks and everything, I think it'll all be welcome. Now I've got my back, well not my back, I back to the piece. I'm going to make the baseboard a bit bigger. I use my wife's Lee's ad gauge which is a fantastic thing for squaring things up. 
Now this is perfect for squaring things up. You can see the grid there that allows me to place it on the baseboard. Make sure that the whole thing's square, 90 degrees. I want it slightly bigger, the baseboard. I'm finding that I keep cutting my backboards too small. When I'm trying to film it, it seems the camera goes right off the edges, so... Uh, just to recycle, I'm using the back of a, an old pad as the baseboard now for my cutting mat. I've got cutting, oh, I've got cutting mats, but the, I don't know, they're just not as soft as the cardboard. I quite like the cardboard as a surface. It allows me to reuse things that would go out straight away. I'm using the wrong knife here. Bad thing to do. Okay, come back to you. Now what I'm going to do is I'll put this um, baseboard up against the backboard like that. And then we'll mount the FA-18 in there. But what I need to do is I need to strengthen the floor piece. So I've cut ribs, just like you would um, for any kind of floor. Need some new glue sticks, hot glue guns. Don't know how I ever worked without them. Which probably made me a bit more ambitious than I might have been. So I've got a framework underneath, makes it a bit more rigid. All I'm going to do now is put a, um, a fence along the front edge. Maybe use the darker colour. Good, so um, what I've done is I've stuck the rails down onto the base. The FA-18. And what I'm doing now is I'm just painting the rails, so there's the um, sketch, the plan sketch up the back. It's looking really good. The floor's been done by um, recycling that piece of card, remember? So on the other piece of footage. Now, a couple of things here. I've got my red paint. So I've got the um, paint that I've pre-mixed. I mixed quite a lot of it, remember, because I was doing the frame. I wanted it all the same colour. Okay, I've done something really stupid there. I wasn't paying attention. I had my paint right near the edge. Now I'm not going to paint the whole thing, I'm just going to paint the two sides that you see. If I can show you how I do this next bit, I'm turning it upside down. It's called cutting in. I could mask it, but I'm scared because it's old cardboard. If I put tape against that edge, it'll probably tear up the um, underneath, rip the paper when I try and take the tape off. That's better. That's working much better.
um, not all good bru not all brushes are good for, for painting straight lines to an edge. This one's particularly good because when the hairs go flat, it forms a fine a fine edge. So there you go, there's the two um, rails. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just trying to draw up the background and I'm using a ruler here to get the vanishing point. So what I do is I rule that line, all those lines, you can see these lines on the photo, they come down to the vanishing point here. And what I'll do is I'll transfer those over to my backboard. I'll put a vanishing point over here. I'm going to transfer those over so that I can paint the background. Here's the ground line. The flat line in the middle. See how all the lines go to the vanishing point? This thing, that line there, that flat line there is eye level. That's here. So I'll just draw an eye on that. Now what I've got is I've probably got enough lines there to transfer those general shape. So um, we've put the ladder in. And I think the shot is going to be from somewhere around here. I don't know, maybe back a bit further so I catch the top of the tailplane. But it's going to be square format, so something like that. So I've got the ladder in for scale. We've got the cabling. Got the floor markings. Gives a good impression anyway. We've got details. Nice, nice moulding anyway to get rid of that. So that's the aircraft. I actually like that angle much more. A bit more dramatic. Gets the top of that thing off there too. Anyway, we'll work that out. I think it's gonna be three quarter shot. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, now let's have a look at the... Um, now here's the design unit. You can see here that this post here, that's a matchstick. And that goes right up through the figure. Right through the centre of the figure, can you see that? And we've attached some wire to that, and that's what I'm attaching wood to, so it's... Now, you can see how that's going to work, and this whole thing will go ahead of the um, aircraft, so it's like a design centre, or it steers that x-ray thing. So that's what we're building now, there's a computer screen, there's a desktop. But I need some room here to sculpt the figure, I'm not sure whether I'll ever bother with the front of it. Trying to get these knees in, they don't seem to be working very well. Keep knocking out. And the wire passes right through the base and gets attached like that. Can you see how there's the wire through there? So that allows that thing to sit there sharply. Okay, so that's what we're working on now. We're going to finish the figure off, get the head on both sides, starting to work though. 